Not long ago, I wrote a blog post about how to create good habits. It was called, Is Your Mind on Autopilot? I talked about how your mind works on what's called a habit loop. The loop starts with a cue, which causes an activity, which leads to a reward. Although I talked about how the act of intentional thinking is eliminated while you're in the habit loop, I didn't talk about the motivators that initiate the habit to begin with. I can remember as a kid getting new sneakers and swearing that they made me run faster. The ones that I'm thinking of in particular were called zips. As soon as I put them on, I sprinted through the store just kind of to test them. I couldn't have been more than six or seven years old. So where did I get the idea that a pair of shoes would make me run faster? It's the messaging I was receiving, either through commercials, friends, or something that stimulated my senses to make me think. That thought from what I saw or heard led me to believe from my thinking that zips made me faster and apparently being fast was important to me, so I allowed that thought to take root. Once that thought took root, I took action to make sure I was right about these shoes making me faster. So I sprinted up and down the aisles of the department stores until I could try them out on the playground where it really counted. I was already pretty fast and athletic, but these shoes in my mind would make me even faster. I was right. At least in my mind I was. I was always one of the fastest, could jump the highest, the farthest, um, at least in my school. I played sports every year through high school and even in college through intramurals because I loved the feeling that being athletic brought me. Notice what was happening. First, I received external messaging. Zips make you run fast. Then I thought about this message and embraced it. Hmm, I think I need to get some zips. Then I took action based on my thoughts that started with the messaging that I received. So when I was in the store with my mother and we were looking at shoes, it was very easy for me to point out the ones I want. Mom, yeah, let's get the zips. Then I find then I found ways to play out the action that would test out my theory of being fast. I was always looking for a race of recess. I always thought of myself as being athletic. And now I'm here owning wellness studios, teaching people how to tap into their athleticism. Your thoughts lead to your actions, your actions lead to your habits. Your habits lead to your character, and your character leads to your destiny. There is a battle going on for your mind. You may not know it, but every day through commercials, friends, your boss, your parents, social media, the list goes on and on, someone or something is trying to influence your thinking through external messaging. You have to be very careful with what you allow to enter into your thoughts, careful with who you listen to, the TV shows you watch, how much time you spend on social media. These things aren't always bad, but whether you believe it or not, they are shaping your character, which will lead or has led you to where you are today. I believe that it's much easier to fall into habits than it used to be. We can find the answer to almost anything we want just by asking Siri on our cell phones. We like to not have to think. So it's only natural that we could fall into a habit where your mind is on autopilot quite easily. I think about how much time I spend on my phone. Oftentimes, if I'm just sitting in a restaurant waiting, I'll find a way to entertain myself through my phone. Or even if I'm kind of in a conversation with somebody, I'll still be browsing through my phone. The point isn't that I overuse my phone. It's that I underutilize my mind. I'm not present. I don't look at my surroundings as much as I think about issues or problems as deeply as maybe I should because I'm used to constant stimulation. I know I'm not alone. Anytime your phone buzzes, dings, whistles, or makes whatever noise to indicate that it needs attention, it cues you to look at it and you get the instant gratification of having your mind fed whatever pops up on your phone screen. That is the habit loop. Cue action reward. I know a lot of people categorize themselves as stress eaters. Food is enticing to almost everyone and we've been programmed to soothe ourselves with food since we were babies. Think about any time you're at work 
and you get a call or email from that person. You know the one. The one that always comes with something you don't want to hear. You immediately feel anxious as soon as you see the name on your caller ID. You're on guard and uptight. Once you get off the phone, you need to calm yourself down. So what do you do? You reach for your favorite sack, snack to soothe your nerves. When you do this over and over, it becomes habitual. Now you identify yourself, your character, as a stress eater. And your body can show the effects from the extra weight you gained. If we recognize what we are doing and think instead of being on autopilot, we have a chance to be more intentional about our character and shape our destiny. Not only does it require you to purposely put good things in your mind by hanging around the right people, reading positive and purposeful information, turning off tabloid TV like Housewives of wherever. I know I crushed some toes right there, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but, if, but it will also require that you allow yourself to engage in thought. Thinking will keep you from becoming a character, acting out someone else's life and chasing someone else's destiny and allow you to be a person of great character and fulfill your own destiny. Think of our mind's reaction to information as our body's reaction to food. When you feed your body constantly with a bunch of empty calories, you become sluggish, lazy, and over time deconditioned. Our minds are overstimulated with empty information and it's making us lazy with our thinking and over time will either delay or mutate our destiny. Start today with reprogramming your mind by monitoring what you allow to enter your eyes and ears. Allow your mind time to wander and think as opposed to being guided or misguided by random stimulus. In situations where residual head trash exists, which is typically untrue or negative thoughts, and they enter your mind, don't allow them to take root. You can control your thought by recognizing what it is and changing it to what you want it to be. You can win the battle for your mind. You just have to fight.